<laughs> you teeny bastard. Now you know how powerful I really am. Be water, my friend. Kiss my converse. On guard. I'll let you try my Wu-Tang style. You don't even know the basic technique of Kung Fu. Lone Wolf and Cub. Cub. Snake Deadly Act is a 1979 million film HK production directed by martial arts bad boy Wilson Tong. The movie, filmed in Hong Kong, did not do well at the box office, possibly due to the storytelling and lack of a real superstar. More on that later. The film stars Fung Hak Ong and Wilson Tong who are both proponents of, you guessed it, the snake style. The two meet in a field for an epic showdown during the cold open. This opening fight scene is pretty good considering I never knew that Fung could fight so well. Anyway, during their match, it is revealed that Kwang Chung, played by Wilson Tong, raped the wife of Yu Yi, played by Fung, and is out for revenge. It is also divulged during the battle that Yu Yi is a rapist himself, which makes this reveal strange and unnecessary. Yu Yi is bested during the battle and manages to escape, but not before vowing to kill the entire Chung family. Fast forward 20 years, and we are introduced to In Kuang Lung's character, Ah Chung, who is the son of the wealthy Mr. Chung, who is now a dignitary that gives to the poor. Ah Chung is seen heading into town when he runs into Yu Yi, who pretends he is sick, to check the young man out. As he is sizing him up, a young woman is heard crying out for help, and Ah Chung springs into action. Some local bullies are harassing a young woman, and Ah Chung comes to her rescue while Yu Yi is watching. Turns out that Ah Chung can fight, and no, his father has not taught him the snake fist technique, but it's more than enough to handle some street toughs. After his decided win, our young Master Chung discovers that the woman he rescued has been forced into prostitution, so he decides to liberate her from her contract by going and speaking to the owner of the brothel where she works. The owner, or madam of the brothel, is played by none other than Angela Mao and she has no plans on giving up the rights of the young girl. And so they fight, and young Master Chung starts losing to the Madame's deadly swordplay. That is, until Yu Yi comes to his rescue with fan in hand. Yu Yi defeats the madam, and she relinquishes control of the young woman. Now there are a lot of things that happen in this movie that quite honestly just don't advance the story, so we won't get into it. The point is that there is this rich kid who is decent at kung fu but fancies himself as some sort of hero. He is constantly getting himself involved in crimes and attempting to right those wrongs until he crosses the wrong guy, a casino manager, and requires Yu Yi's character to come and save him again. Meanwhile, on another side of town, we see that Master Chung Sr. is developing a new style, some kind of lobster fist or lobster claw technique if you will and that there is a cabal of baddies, including the madam, the casino manager, and a third mysterious character that are responsible for all the mayhem in town and are planning something bigger at the behest of their big boss. Getting back to our protagonist, it would appear that Yu Yi has accepted him as his pupil, provided that he does everything he is told to do, which leads us into the gratuitous training sequences a la every early Jackie Chan film of the 70s. Now while young Master Chung is progressing, his new teacher discovers that a gang robbed a cache of valuable antiques and he shares with his student that he believes Senior Master Chung's servant, played by Philip Ko, had something to do with it. Young Chung doesn't believe this is true because the servant doesn't know any Kung Fu, but he agrees to keep an eye on him. And when the masked character re-emerges with the goods, you know who is there and takes on the bad guys by his lonesome. The disguised leader manages to get away, but young Master Chung was able to secure the valuables and hide them. He then goes to the servants' quarters and questions Tim Pak, but that turns up nothing. The next day, while walking in the woods, young Master Chung is confronted by the masked character whom he fought before. 
a fight ensues, and after a hard-fought battle, Chung discovers that it was indeed Tim Pak who was behind the heist. But Tim Pak was unable to reveal who the mastermind behind everything is. When Ah Chung returns to Yu Yi to disclose what he learned, they decide to set a trap to lure out the big boss. Turns out, it's Master Chung Sr. The old master confesses that he has been a criminal for many years and he likes doing it. That's when a fight breaks out between father and son that eventually turns into a fight between teacher and student. In between, there's some snaking, some lobstering, and you wind up rooting for the student more so than his father or his teacher. Snake Deadly Act is a movie that might be good for an appetizer to a better movie on a Saturday afternoon. It's a movie that maybe you have playing in the background while entertaining some friends. It's a movie that in my mind is just barely okay. So let's talk about it. The Pros There is some fairly decent fight choreography in this film, particularly in the opening sequence, but nothing to write home about. Allowing Fung Hak Ong to showcase his fighting prowess was a welcome change, and while he didn't necessarily blow me away with his artistry, I thought it was a decent showing. The Cons This movie script has major flaws beginning with the idea to make both Yu Yi and Master Chung both rapists. What was that about? This movie is an exercise in wasted talent, from Wilson Tong, who was barely in the movie, to Angela Mao, to Philip Ko. Even Bolo Yung makes an appearance. The movie never does anything significant with these characters, especially the madam and the casino manager, which are never seen again after the second act. The movie's biggest crime, however, is the fact that it didn't get a bigger name to play Ah Chung's character. In Kwang Long is a decent actor, don't get me wrong, but he lacks the charisma of a Jackie Chan or Lee Yi Min. This deficit ultimately hurt this movie in ways that I can't begin to explain, and it feels like a wasted opportunity. Overall, Snake Deadly Act is a movie that I wanted to like so bad. Besides the opening fight scene and a few bright spots here and there, there are very few redeeming qualities. Bad lighting, a terrible ending, a poor script, the waste of an all-star cast, and the lack of some real star power in the lead role doomed this movie from the beginning. It's a bad outing for director Wilson Tom, so I'll have to give it four and a half kicks. Well, that's all for now. Tell us how you feel about Snake Deadly Act. Comment below and let us know. And please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more great content. Until next time, this is OG Ant. Peace and... You are blessed. You've been lucky. I wish I got you last time. On guard, I'll let you try my Wu-Tang style.